This weekend is May 10th and 11th, which means we're definitely crossing into mid-May. And I think we can all call that late spring. And of course, don't forget Mother's Day coming up on the 11th on Sunday. Kind of a quiet weather pattern, but I'm seeing signs that we'll be getting into a much more active weather pattern next week across the country. Why don't we take a look at those details? This afternoon, we're looking at a couple of upper level lows, one across Pennsylvania, the other in Arkansas. Very large ridge associated with warm weather from California into the Dakotas. But this is our next big change coming in from the Pacific. That's going to hit later this weekend. You can see that large trough off of Oregon and Washington, and that is going to move inland around midweek next week. And this is what will open up that strong southwesterly flow into the Great Plains. So we're going to be back to a severe weather pattern across parts of the central U.S. towards the end of next week. We take a look at the surface analysis this afternoon and we see the last gasp of winter here with polar air flowing south, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, and dew points quite dry in the 30s and 40s. Where do we find the tropical air? Dew points in the 70s, those are only going to be down there in Florida and along the southeastern Atlantic coast. So we've really cleared out a lot of that tropical air. That's a big negative factor for severe weather. And it's going to take some time to pull that back northward into the Great Plains. If we take a look at the integrated vapor transport map, this is showing a fairly weak pattern. The precipitable water in this area running about one to two inches, lesser amounts further north so most of our better atmospheric river setups are going to be down there in the southeastern U.S., some of it recurving around the north side. So this whole area will be kind of wet over the next few days. Gradually, things shift to the east by Tuesday and Wednesday. Some return flow trying to get established there in Texas. It doesn't really take hold until maybe Friday or Saturday next week. And then you can see a big change for Monday the 19th. Look at that. So possibly a big increase in severe weather after next week, but we'll just have to see. Cool weather continues in the northeastern U.S. Highs in the 40s and 50s from Maine to Pennsylvania. An upper level low was positioned across Pennsylvania and a large area of precipitation from upstate New York down through Long Island and New Jersey. Flood watches were in effect through Saturday morning across the northeast from New York City to Binghamton, over to Albany, and into New England. One to two inches of rain possible through that area. Flood warnings already in effect in the Connecticut River region, causing a few road closures. We have frost advisories for tonight in parts of eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, down into eastern West Virginia. That includes Akron, Youngstown, Oil City, Somerset, and Elkins, temperatures will fall to about 35, resulting in localized frost formation. Remember, the air temperature is measured at 2 meters, so it can be colder down near the ground. In the Great Lakes, highs were in the 60s, but you cross into Wisconsin, we start picking up those 70s and even 80s in Minnesota. Across the southeastern U.S., we had that upper level low in Louisiana. Further to the east, higher upper level heights, and that's supporting warmer temperatures. We had 90s across the Tampa area, Florida this afternoon, 80s elsewhere, and up north, 70s closer to that upper level troughing. Very unsettled weather. Stationary front through Georgia and Mississippi and another frontal boundary down there in the Gulf of Mexico. All of that helping to produce widespread convective activity. And of course, you can see the slight risk out there in coastal Georgia and Florida and a slight risk in far northeastern North Carolina. And we did have a tornado warning for a thunderstorm capable of producing a water spout. That was a couple of hours ago, but still quite notable. There's a look at the storm. There's a current look at the radar. This has been a persistent BOACO configuration right there. 
the tornado warning earlier was right there. So, yeah, that's a bookend vortex, and that could have some potential for continued severe weather as it approaches the Mississippi coast. Across the southern plains, this is a distinct cold advection pattern from West Texas all the way to Arkansas. Cool conditions, 70s for highs in the northern half of Texas. Even the Pecos River Valley, which would be well into the 90s this time of year, seeing only 78 degrees this afternoon. In the northern plains, temperatures were forecast to approach 90 degrees through southwestern Minnesota, widespread 80s from Bismarck to Topeka and from North Platte to Minneapolis. And it will get worse tomorrow for the Dakotas. Further up north, some cool air moving into the Dakotas, but some evidence of wildfire smoke. They're already having problems out there in Canada. There have been air quality statements for southeastern Saskatchewan, western Manitoba due to that wildfire smoke. And conditions will be favorable across this area for wildfires for Sunday. Across the southwest, a heat wave is building. Temperatures this afternoon in the low to mid 100s in the southwest deserts, Phoenix up to 102, Yuma 103. One of our first heat advisories this summer, now in effect today and tomorrow for inland areas of Los Angeles, including the lower elevations of the Inland Empire and the San Fernando Valley. Temperatures will climb to 102 today and 106 for tomorrow. Heat advisory is also in effect today and tomorrow in inland coastal California from Paso Robles to King City. Temperatures will be in the upper 90s. Looking at the weather across the Pacific Northwest coming increasingly under the effects of a frontal zone. That frontal zone has already crossed inland. Looks like the main front is around the Cascades, but still we're coming up into the 70s from Portland to Seattle. Another disturbance offshore that looks like an occlusion. I think it is detached from the main baroclinic zone, but overall this whole area will be a frontogenetic zone over the next couple of days, and we're going to see that gradually shift into California and Nevada. There's a closer look at that frontal zone in the Pacific Northwest, the thickness ribbons across Vancouver Island, Washington, and Western Oregon. We go out into the Pacific and up to Alaska. We are pretty much clear of problems in Alaska. Temperatures coming up into the 40s. Some gale warnings in the eastern Aleutians right in there. Winds out of the southeast to 35 knots and seas to 11 feet. Canada looking pretty good, although there's quite a bit of cold air up there in the high Arctic, some of it spilling southeast into the Hudson Bay region and producing some stormy weather. We do have wind warnings on the Hudson Bay coast of Ontario. Wind gusts could be up to 55 miles an hour this afternoon. Those wind warnings extend into eastern Hudson Bay, and we do have a few blizzard warnings further north out in this region right there. Much of Labrador expecting a significant winter storm on Sunday, 6 to 10 inches of snow possible with winds up to 50 miles an hour. So let's take a look at the forecast. Again, not really a whole lot going on for today. But for tonight, we're going to see widespread showers and thunderstorms across the Gulf Coast area. It will be very slow to dissipate tonight. And then, of course, it will prime once again for tomorrow as we get that heating. So possibly some severe weather across Florida. They do have a marginal risk. We could see isolated high wind and hail with a chance for an isolated tornado in the Florida panhandle. Heat wave continues setting up in North Dakota. Widespread upper 80s with 90s expected from Glasgow to Minot. Wolf Point, Montana, expecting 96 degrees. Ironically, cooler weather across Texas as we get that northeasterly flow. Another day of mid-70s. And the heat wave continues to get worse in the southwest deserts. Widespread mid-100s. Bakersfield also seeing 100 degrees. Then for Sunday, rain problems continue across the southeast. Another day of severe weather from North Florida into Southern Mississippi and Southern Alabama. We could see a few storms with large hail and high wind gusts. 
that upper level low located in this area right there. You can see the concentric appearance of the thickness field. So we could see showers all the way back there into East Texas. The heat wave gets a little bit worse in the Dakotas. Almost all of the Dakotas will see low 90s with the hottest readings around Minot with 95 degrees. And heat wave through the southwest deserts, mid 100s, Phoenix up to 105. A little bit cooler in the San Joaquin Valley as this front moves southeast, temperatures falling into the low 90s. And an increase in precipitation in the Pacific Northwest as that large trough comes on shore, rain could spread as far east as Montana, Idaho, and western Wyoming. The Storm Prediction Center does have a marginal risk for severe weather in eastern Montana and western North Dakota due to strong gusty winds. And then we go into Monday. Showers and storms continue all through the southeast, but it's starting to lift up to North Carolina and Virginia. The heat wave eases in the north central U.S. We start to see the highs fall into the 80s. And a major break in the heat wave in the southwest, we see highs falling into the 70s in the San Joaquin Valley, but it will remain 95 to 101 in Arizona. In Texas, some of that heat starts shifting into the state from the southwest. We see low to mid 90s returning to West Texas. And we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, the heat expands into the central U.S. and gradually into the Midwest later in the week. And we see all this disturbed weather across the Rockies and move into the central U.S. Now, keep in mind, I really don't trust the fine details on this model. Again, this is 150 hours out. The dry line position, that's also a little bit uncertain. But overall, I do think that conditions are coming together towards late in the week for severe weather, possibly in Texas and Oklahoma, maybe up to Kansas later in the weekend. We'll just have to see how all that works out. And that is all for this edition of Forecast Lab. We'll be back here on Monday for the supporter edition. You need to get signed up on Patreon if you want to receive that forecast. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.